Welcome to the KZJN News. Today we're bringing news about the Groundwater Sustainability Agency, storm damage in Death Valley, news for this week's City Council meeting, news from China Lake, presidential campaign news, a detailed rundown of this weekend's Petroglyph Festival, today's gas prices, weather, sports, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Whitney. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. In very important news about the proposed Groundwater Sustainability Agency, the Council will discuss approval of letter of intent to participate in the GSA with Kern County. This is a letter of intent that the city will send to the county that they plan on being a part of the new GSA. The staff report provides the following information. The Sustainable Groundwater Management Act established a new structure for managing California's groundwater resources at a local level by local agencies. The SGMA requires that by June 30, 2017, the formation of the locally controlled groundwater sustainability agencies in the state's priority groundwater basins and subbasins. Per the SGMA, a GSA shall develop and implement a groundwater sustainability plan to meet the sustainability goal of the basin or subbasin to ensure that it's operating within its sustainable yield without causing undesirable results. In addressing the need to form a GSA, the Board of Supervisors of the County of Kern, in a letter dated September 22nd, requested that the City of Ridgecrest express an interest in participating in a proposed GSA. Specifically, the board requested that the city indicate its intended role in the GSA. As an eligible agency for inclusion in the GSA, the city can be involved in the initiation and formation of the GSA, as well as be an active member. Because of the importance of water to the city and the entire Indian Wells Valley, the city must seriously contemplate its role. Of course, the city will be taking public input on this issue. So if anyone has a position or comment on the topic, this would be a good time to present it to the Council. Well, in more October-related storm damage news no one covered, we get this story. While we were all consumed with the road closure and damage on Route 58 through Tehachapi, the storm also really slammed Death Valley. Here's a video of the damage that took place there.
Dry rivers and lakes became active water tributaries again, and Scotty's Castle really got hit hard too. So Death Valley is now rebuilding. In the news from China Lake, the Office of Personnel Management has finally approved the pay rate structure for Kern County to be the same as Los Angeles County and Ventura County. The pay difference has affected the people working at China Lake for years. While the people working here were working for the same organizations as the folks at Point Magoo, a person at Point Magoo in the same position got paid more than the person at China Lake. This had a significant impact during the last BRAC where a lot of people that worked at Point Magoo were supposed to be moved here, but refused, partially due to the pay cut they would have taken to come here. So now that discrepancy has been removed. This will result in all civil service people here getting approximately an 8% or even higher raise, depending on their positions. This will put more money available to be spent locally. Now in City Council news, here's what's on Wednesday's agenda. During presentations, the Council will issue a proclamation honoring American Indian Heritage Month for November. On the consent calendar, the Council will consider adopting a resolution accepting an offer of dedication from the Odes for a parcel of land and authorizing the Mayor to sign the right-of-way agreement and the certificate of acceptance for the escrow fees of $5,000. And they'll also be adopting a resolution accepting an offer of dedication from the Pam Richcrest Venture for a parcel of land and authorizing the mayor to sign the right-of-way agreement and certificate of acceptance for the escrow fees of $5,000. Next, they'll consider adopting a resolution declaring surplus equipment and authorizing the staff to negotiate the destruction of said equipment. Next, the council will receive for file the quarterly investment report for the first quarter of 2015. Then they'll consider adopting a resolution amending the classification plan and revising certain job descriptions. Then next, during the discussion and other action items segment of the meeting, they'll cover these items. This is probably the most important item on the agenda. Like I opened today's news, they'll be discussing approval of a letter of intent to participate in the proposed Groundwater Sustainability Agency. This is a letter of intent that the city will send to the county that they plan on being part of the new GSA. Of course, the city will be taking public input on this issue. So if anyone has a position or comment on the topic, this would be a good time to present it to the Council. Finally, they'll consider approving a resolution approving the sale of property within the Ridgecrest Business Park to American Loan Masters. The company proposes to buy three lots at the north end of the commercial park right on North China Lake Boulevard. Purchase will be for $750,000. So, join the Council Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. at City Hall for this meeting. Well, last week, the House swore in their new Speaker of the House. He was handed the gavel by Pelosi after Boehner left the podium. With that, Paul Ryan took over. House Majority Whip Kevin McCarthy provided motions to notify the President and the Senate of the election. All motions passed. Ryan really hit the news networks over the weekend. He held a number of interviews. Most carried the same messages. Paul Ryan said on Sunday it would be ridiculous to work with President Obama on immigration reform saying he cannot trust the president on the issue. I think it would be a ridiculous notion to try and work on this issue like this with a president we simply cannot trust on this issue, Ryan said. He tried to go it alone, circumventing the legislative process with his executive orders. So that is not in the cards. I think if we reach consensus on how best to achieve border and interior enforcement security, I think that's fine, Ryan said. Ryan vowed to offer Americans a bold, specific, and clear agenda producing Republican solutions on the economy, health care, and foreign policy. I can't pick up where John Boehner left off. It has to be done differently, Ryan said. The appropriations process, in which Congress funds the government by passing 12 separate spending bills, would be back on track. Some Republicans have criticized Boehner for failing to pass appropriations bills and being forced to negotiate budget deals with Obama. Ryan declined to say whom he would support for the Republican presidential nomination, saying the Speaker should remain neutral. He did say that any of the 16 declared Republican candidates would be preferable to de Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton. He said Clinton is untrustworthy. House Republicans won't be offering legislation on immigration reform, adding again that Obama has attempted to go around Congress with executive orders, making him an unreliable partner. Ryan said the president doesn't have the authority to write or change laws. That is Congress's responsibility. 
His use of executive order to circumvent Congress is illegal. The House would restrict itself to passing s smaller bills on border enforcement or interior security if there's consensus among Republicans, he said. So that's the start under a new Speaker of the House. Stay tuned for the latest in the presidential polls when we come back. Thanks for staying with us. In the presidential races, we find these latest results. It seems Trump has retaken the lead back from Carson. As of October 31st, the current rankings are Trump has gained 5 points and sits at 28%, Carson at 23%, Rubio at 11%, Cruz and Bush are at 6% each, Fiorina at 3%, Paul and Jindor are at 2%, with Huckabee, Kasich, Christie, and Santorum at 1%, and Graham and Pataki at 0 on the Democrat side, we have these results. Clinton is in at 48%, Sanders at 33%, and O'Malley at 2%. So that's the current presidential race standings. Well, by now, you have got to have heard that the big event of the year is coming this weekend, the second annual Petroglyph Festival. It will be a three-day event running Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, November 6th, 7th, and 8th. Four tours per day of the Petroglyphs on the base are set. The tours will run all three days. Tickets will be $35 each. Advanced registration is required. It is a two-step process. You can go to the Matarango Museum to register or go online to shop.matarango.org. There's uh, two steps to the online sign-up process. First, there is a link to sign up with the Navy for permission to go on the base. This is due to security concerns. The second step is the process to select your tour date and time. Tours will leave from the parking lot at Petroglyph Park. All visitors will be driven in vans to the location. No personal vehicles will be permitted on the base. The Petroglyph Canyon site is at 5,000 feet. You should bring water and good hiking shoes, sunscreen, and other garments appropriate for the weather at the time. Every tour will have one hour in Petroglyph Canyon. This is the largest single collection of Native American Petroglyph art in the world. In other activities this weekend, on Friday there will be a ceremony to bury a time capsule in Petroglyph Park at 10 a.m. Friday morning. Then there will be a, a street fair on Balsam Street Saturday and Sunday. There will also be the annual Gem and Mineral Show out at the Desert Empire Fairground Saturday and Sunday. Also on Saturday, China Lake will open its gates to the airfield for a community open house. It will run all day until 3 p.m. A valid ID is required for all visitors 16 and older. If you've never been out to the airfield at China Lake, go to this one. This is an experience you'll never forget. The kids will be amazed with this visit. There will also be the annual intertribal powwow. This will take place Saturday and Sunday as well. It will be held all day at Kermagee Center. They will have their traditional hog roast on Sunday, along with all sorts of Indian entertainment and food. Indian tacos will be sold both days. If you haven't had one of those tacos, you haven't had a taco Indian style. They are not like Mexican tacos. The Indian tacos are fantastic. There will also be a wine walk Saturday evening on Boston Street. There will be live bands, food, and booths available on Boston Street both days. So if you ever say Ridgecrest doesn't have anything to do, this is an event you better not miss. This event is bringing in thousands of visitors from outside Ridgecrest. What a weekend we have in store for us. Again, Petroglyph Tours start Friday for four tours per day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Time capsule bearing Friday morning, China Lake Community Open House at the airfield all day Saturday, Wine Walk Saturday evening, Boston Street Fair Saturday and Sunday, Gem and Mineral Show Saturday and Sunday, Intertribal Pow Wow Saturday and Sunday. Now in case you continuous effort to provide news and information you've asked for, here are today's gas prices for Ridgecrest and some surrounding areas. As of this morning, Ridgecrest is still ranging from 289 to 309. Lancaster is going from 269 to 305. The LA Valley area 267 to 289, and the Bishop area 328 to 349. We have five stations coming in at the 289 figure. It appears prices have stopped any real movement. Tune in Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for updates. We at KZGN always suggest you shop locally to support our local economy. Remember, when you pay sales tax out of town, you're helping those cities pave their streets instead of here. Now stay tuned for weather and sports when we come back.
Thanks for staying with us. Let's go to Lane for the weather. Thank you, Tom. From the National Weather Service, an area of low pressure moving across the Gulf Coast will bring heavy rain to parts of the southeast on Monday, with rainfall rates of up to 2 inches per hour possible. The heavy rain could cause flash flooding. Temperatures across the nation. Carolina's at 68, Georgia at 70, Arkansas at 67, Northern Texas at 78, Arizona at 80, and Los Angeles at 70. For us locally, tonight, a 20% chance of showers, mostly cloudy, with a low around 48, west wind 20 to 25 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 35. Tuesday, a 20% chance of showers, mostly sunny with a high near 58, southwest wind 5 to 10 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 15. Tuesday night, partly cloudy with a low around 45, west-northwest wind around 5 miles per hour. Wednesday, mostly sunny with a high near 57, north-northwest wind around 10 miles per hour. Wednesday night, partly cloudy with a low around 43, north-northwest wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high near 61, northwest wind around 5 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy with a low around 44, east-southeast wind around 5 miles per hour. And Friday, sunny with a high near 66, east wind around 5 miles per hour. And that is your forecast for the IWV. Now back to Tom. Thanks, Lane. And now here's Tom Heck with sports. And a very pleasant Monday evening to everyone. Let's start with Friday night football game. Burroughs lost their first league game. They dropped a 27-10 decision to Oak Hills. The Bulldogs just a little bit quicker and a little bit bigger. All kinds of pressure all night long on Austin Griffin. Now, Griffin's had a very, very good season, but this past Friday night, not a whole lot of time on many possessions to throw down field and find receivers. Oak Hills, very good defensively, and the Bulldogs right now are in second place. Their only loss in league was to Serrano. Speaking of Serrano, the Burroughs will head there Friday night, last regular season game. The Burroughs will be in the playoffs in two weeks. They'll be at least number three in the seedings for the desert rather for the Mojave River League, uh, if they can get the upset win Friday night, they would actually be um, tied for first place. Uh, and that would be very interesting to see what would happen if that occurred. But that's a possibility if they can stop the Serrano run game. Freshman football, the Burroughs freshman team lost 6 to nothing. Only one touchdown scored in that game. That was in the second half by Oak Hills. All right, volleyball this week. They'll be in action on Monday, Wednesday. The team overall in league is 5-4. and four. They're in a decent position for a playoff. They need to beat Sultana this week to make sure that they get that spot. Okay, UCLA, big win over Colorado, 35-31. That keeps the Bruins' hopes alive for a Southern Division Pac-12 championship. USC also won. They won up in Berkeley at Strawberry Canyon, they call it. 27-21. USC used some very good defense in that game. Now USC also is still in the mix for a possibility of a championship game in the South. All right, let's talk about Utah. Utah was number three a week ago. They came in. They lost badly to USC at the Coliseum. They beat Oregon State up in Corvallis this week. So Utah right now still clinging to a hope that they can get a championship game in the Pac-12. And really, with the bowl games depend on how you do pretty much from your own league, obviously. Okay, some crazy football games this week. I mean, absolutely nuts. Minnesota and Michigan. Minnesota scored a touchdown with 12 seconds left. They reviewed it and said his knees hit the ground at the 6-inch line. So they had time for two plays left and one timeout left, and they decide on the first play to start under center. They went into a shotgun. They ran something crazy. I'm not even sure what they were trying to do, but they don't score, and there's only two seconds left. They Luckily, they had any time at all. They called timeout. Now, they could tie the game against Michigan, who has the number one defense in all the NCAA. Michigan ranked number 10 overall in the NCAA, and it would be a nice upset for Minnesota, or they could go for the win. And they decide to go for the win. They try to quarterback keeper and no go. The big hold for Michigan. So the Wolverines, Steve Harbaugh's team, still in contention for a BCS championship bowl. They have one loss 
and that was that crazy, I beg your pardon, two losses. They only have one loss in the league, and that was that crazy loss to Michigan State in the last play of the game. They've been involved in some absolutely crazy stuff. You want to see absolutely crazy and bizarre, go to the website and see if you can watch the end of the Duke-Miami game. Now, Miami just fired their coach this week. Miami down most of the game against Duke. Duke comes back at the very, very end. I should say Duke down most of the game. Duke comes back, and with basically eight seconds left in the game, you figure it's all over. Well, Duke, with the lead, kicked off to Miami. They used eight, eight lateral passes to go all the way down and score a touchdown the last play of the game. Now, they reviewed it, and it looked to people that watched it a couple of times and knees hit the ground, but the officials called it a touchdown, and right now those officials have been suspended by the ACC. However, they reviewed it for about seven to nine minutes, and they, for whatever reason, did not call the knee down. Very strange game. you got to see it for yourself. Miami and Duke. Go to the Miami website. I'm sure it'll be there. And look at that last play of the game. Crazy. Okay, some top 10 football. We'll look at the standings tomorrow as far as that goes. Stanford comes back. They beat Washington State in the rain. Utah, as I mentioned, beat Oregon State. Nebraska loses in Lincoln. They lose for the sixth time in the season. They haven't done that in 30-some-odd years. Wow. In the NFL, the Saints get a win over the Giants, 52-49. Kai Furbaugh, the last uh, second field goal in that game. The Bengals stay undefeated. They win. Tampa Bay beats Atlanta. Atlanta, only their second loss. The Rams beat the Niners in St. Louis. The Chiefs-Lions in London, and the Chiefs won easily. Minnesota beat Chicago, and the Ravens beat San Diego on a last second field goal. That means that the Chargers have lost four games in a row. They'll come back to San Diego next week before their bye week. Arizona also easily over Cleveland that game back in Cleveland. That's your sports for this Monday. I'm Tom Heck for KZGN. So that's the news for today. All of us at KZGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing us, KZGN TV, Richcrest's only locally owned community TV station. Now stay tuned for Richcrest Talk coming up next.